This is Dr. Charmaine Jackman, and this is how I create. Welcome to This Is How We Create, a show that digs deeper into the creative life of contemporary artists of color. Discover what feeds their creativity and how they've found or are finding their artistic voice. Through these intimate and candid conversations, you'll gain insights into the lives of creative professionals of color that are hard to find anywhere else. Hey friends, Martine Severin here. Welcome back. Lately, I've been thinking about what it means to live in your art. That place where you produce work that pushes you, that place where you create work that thrills you, and where you create work that allows you to be the creative you want to be. So, in honor of that, today in the chair, we're chatting with someone who proposes a different way of moving towards that goal. Our guest, Dr. Charmaine Jackman, is a therapist and founder of InnoPsych, an organization on a mission to change the face of therapy and to promote wellness and healing for people of color. Through this episode, Dr. Jackman challenges us on how we can begin to or continue to steward our mental health to improve our overall well-being and the way in which we create. Enjoy. Welcome to This Is How We Create. I'm your host, Martine Severin. Today on the show, we're continuing our conversation on healthy, wealthy, and wise. In particular, we'll turn our attention to mental health by chatting with Dr. Charmaine Jackman. Dr. Jackman is the founder and CEO of InnoPsych, an organization on a mission to change the face of therapy and to promote wellness and healing for people of color. InnoPsych Inc. is an award-winning organization focused on increasing access to therapy through its online therapist of color directory and thought-provoking emotional wellness programming. As a change maker, Dr. Jackman is passionate about the intersection of psychology, mental health and diversity, equity and inclusion, and has created social impact initiatives that support community members and mental health professionals. She has used her expertise to shape how organizations respond to and support their employees during the COVID-19 and racial violence crises. In 2020, Dr. Jackman was the recipient of the American Psychological Association's 2020 PLC Diversity Award. And Dr. Jackman loves talking about mental health and is a national spoke and is a national spokesperson for mental health and emotional wellness. She has also been featured in both print and TV media outlets locally and national. Welcome to the show, Dr. Jackman. Thank you. Thank you for this warm introduction. <laughs> well, I'm so pleased to have you on. I'm friends primarily with your husband, and that's how I came to know you. But I just didn't realize how awesome you are (laughs) until for some reason I thought, (laughs) let me look a little bit more into her. (laughs) And then from there, I just took a deep dive into InnoPsych and into your work and made the realization that I really myself needed to focus more on my mental health this year but we'll get to that in a in a little later i'd love to start out by asking you to tell us about the young charmaine and what led you to therapy and psychology oh my gosh i love that question uh, because there's some funny answers to that that i was like a missile right i knew i wanted to study psychology from around 15 years old and that has just been my you know driving force but i grew up in this small island in the caribbean called barbados at the time i'd never met a psychologist and the only psychologist i knew was one on tv named bob newhart it was a show called the bob newhart show show um this was an old white guy who owned a bed and breakfast in Maine or some rural place like that. And then he also had a psychology practice and I just loved the show. So that was one of the inspirations. But it's funny because I had my mom, I have a show that I I call Thriving Thursdays. And I had my mom on a couple weeks ago and we were actually talking about mental health in our family. And one of the things we reflected on as a kid, I had these panic attacks that would center, that would occur only when someone died. 
And so like the night after the, the funeral, the burial, I would just couldn't sleep. I have severe anxiety. Um, so, but never had, you know, access to a psychologist or anyone. So it was some of these earlier pieces that I start to piece together. I also had an uncle who's deceased now, but he had some significant substance abuse um, concerns when I was younger. And I remember one time he invited me, I was in college in Iowa at the time and I went back home to visit. Um, and he invited me to one of his Narcotics Anonymous meetings. And it was for me, you know, and looking back on it, it was such a touching piece because it was part of him bringing me into his world, but also like supporting my career, my choice. So, so and, you know, those are some of the pieces. Um, I also used to give therapy to my friends in high school, hoping nobody will sue me <laughs> for any damage caused <laughs> at the time. Um, <laughs> but those were just some of the pieces I, you know, I just really love talking and actually I love more listening to people's stories um, and trying to think about how I can help them. I love puzzles. So I love to figure out how I can support and help. So I think those are all little pieces that just led me to where I am now. And I love my journey. I really love what I do. Well, was it Bob Newhart in particular, or had you picked this up, this want for your career? You know, I don't know. Be again, we never had psychologists, so I, I remember loving my sociology class, but very different, right? Because it's more societal issues. But I love watching. You know, we were we didn't have very much television options back then, <laughs> so it was Bob Newhart at whatever time he came on. But I just love that. I, I know those are some of the pieces. I love that show and I loved what he did in his clinical work, right, with, 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 with clients. And I, I think that might have been an early, you know, impetus for me because I would, I would then do, I would act it out. <laughs> Our listeners are mostly creatives. Um, and I'd love to for you to talk about what steps uh, some people can take to take care of their mental health. Just as a side note, I work with creatives. My day job right now is as a dean of a high school, an arts high school in Boston. And so I work with youth artists and I work with adult artists in that context. So I love my artists and they have actually helped me to be more creative in my work. Um, but that's a great question. And you know, one of the things that I've found working with artists um, that can get in the way of their craft is this perfectionism. And I see it quite a bit, particularly when artists are younger, um, is that they want, it, want the need and desire to get their craft right. Sometimes, you know, I think for the youth on the first try. And so of course, it does, your art doesn't come out perfectly on your first try, right? It, uh, one of my colleagues always says that you have to make bad art in order to get good art. And so I think that perfectionism that comes, there's anxiety that often is underlying that. Um, the idea that the, the thing has to be perfect right away can often get people very stuck and paralyzed in their craft and can really disrupt their flow. So that's one thing I would say. Um, the other thing I would say is sleep. I've seen where sleep can be the, the thing that gets released or let go very easily in service of the art, but long-term that does have some debilitating effects. It does have, can impact the quality of your art over time because it just messes with your systems. It just, it can then impact your creativity. You know, if you're tired and you're drained and you're not repl replenishing and restoring yourself, um, that can be really difficult. So I encourage the folks that I work with, it's, you know, how do you create, it's really important to create routines for creating <laughs> and also to make sure you're taking breaks from your art, right? Whether it's tapping into other art forms or just doing something that's maybe more monotonous, you know, that that helps to, to drive and fuel your creativity when you actually take, take breaks. And sometimes people think it, it doesn't sound logical or it doesn't make sense it actually works. I resonate with um, your thoughts about perfectionism and how it does get in the way um, of creating work because I, I 
thing when you start creating, you have this idea in mind as to what you want. And you're when you start, unless you are that unicorn, you're not going to get there right away. It really does take time for you to learn the skills and to learn how to um, become a vessel for your art. Um, and I know for sure about the sleep. When I was getting my master's degree, I really thought I was sleeping maybe three, four hours a day um, or a night, I should say. And I could not hold a thought together. I could not complete a sentence. I think I was pretty right. rubbish because this, I just wasn't very effective. I was, <laughs> I couldn't, I wasn't good for anything. Um, right. And there's so much to be said about getting a good night's sleep and to wake up feeling refreshed. Yes, yes, uh, yes. So, so true. And, and, you know, particularly I think when you're younger, it's like, you know, you can bounce back or, you know, you'll sleep, take a nap during the day, but it, it just continues, it perpetuates, right? It just messes up that cycle. Um, and I, you know, I'll be the first to say um, I'm, I'm a sleep person in constant recovery. So every night it's like, I have to check myself and like get back. So it is, it has been a lifelong struggle for me, but I do really pay attention to those nights where I do get like seven, eight hours of sleep and how I feel the next day. My memory is fresher. I can remember things better. I actually am doing a challenge with my sister. We we have in our mothers the role models, <laughs> models that were not that ideal. So we tend to overwork and, you know, push grind, right? My mom was a grinder, so we tend to grind. So we're supporting each other on the sleep challenge and we just show, you know, we have to show our hours of sleep on our whether it's our Fitbit or um, whatever tracker we have. And so that accountability is really important. Mm. To your point about the grind and the artist way is a, a lot of time the way that we get work is through freelancing and freelancing isn't an easy life, right? So I know that you often refer to the Maya Angelou's quote, in the struggle lies the joy. I'd love for you to talk to us about how folks who tend to hustle or uh, who are always grinding away and who are always on the go, how can they prioritize their mental health? Right. Okay. Yeah, that's such a great question. And I think it's so important, particularly we're in this hustle culture and we sometimes we tend to associate hustle with grinding, right? That we're kind of pushing our body to the limits. We're, you know, staying up late and getting things done. So I really want to shift that, you know, and I, again, I'm someone for myself shifting that, that concept and that immediate association. But when I think about artists, I think about the use of your emotions and your emotional mind as so integral as part of your artistic and creative process. And so in the same way that as an artist, maybe as a dancer, you take care of your physical body, right? In terms of what you eat and how you warm up and how you stretch your muscles. Or um, if you're, uh, you know, an instrumentalist, you know, how you warm up your vocal cords, right? And I see that emotional mind in the same way that we have to protect as artists to protect that emotional mind because so, so much of your art comes through and flows through your emotional self and your emotional mind that it's really important to, to pay attention and to nurture and create that part of you that is so integral to your art your art and your artistic process. So, you know, some of the things that, you know, the one thing I would say, and I always say this, you know, I'm a psychologist, so I often and will always recommend therapy. I would say, don't wait for a problem to start seeing a therapist, right? Um, we kind of have this mentality that therapists are only there for problems and problem solutions. And that's one of our, one of the things that we do. But a big part of our work is also helping people to think about structures and practices that they can integrate in their life before something major happens, right? So how are we creating those routines and those practices that foster our healthy emotional development over time and not just when, not just when there's a problem? The other thing that I would focus on is I have this thing I, I named my three M's for mental wellness. 
And the three are mindfulness, mindset, and the mind-body connection. And so mindfulness is, if you haven't heard of it, and it's, it's around a lot now, so most of you have at least heard the word mindfulness, but it's really, there are three important tenets for mindfulness. And the first one is developing a relaxation practice. So the breath, right? So taking time to breathe. So it's so important, you know, during your day, how do you take moments out that you just pause and stay present? That's the second one, stay present. And then the third one is having a non-judgmental mindset. So being able to notice your thoughts, your emotions, and allow them to just flow away without judgment. And again, it, we talk about a mindfulness practice because it does take practice to do these skills and to have them integrated and be part of your practice. You know, I think for many artists, some of these things are already built in, right? As vocalists, you're focused on your breath. As dancers, you're focused on your breath. Um, so some of the art forms already have some of these mindfulness practices as part of the way that you create and execute. Your, the second one is mindset. And again, I think, you know, it's really important to really foster that resilient, um, emotionally healthy mindset. And we can do this through, you know, one thing is I, I often recommend is journaling. And whether you have a written journal or you might have an audio journal, right? You might just talk into your, your phone or a device. Um, having time to just ex, um, connect with your feelings and your emotions are really critical. And so building that emotional mindset is around, you know, journal, reflecting on patterns, noticing patterns, adjusting patterns, also building in positive self-talk. Um, so again, you know, I connect back to my work at the high school, the arts high school, and some students who I struggle as artists, they are so, their inner critic is so loud and often so negative that it can really impact their ability to, to be successful as artists. So really, how are you developing practices on a daily that support your positive mindset that foster positive self-talk that lift you up and that affirm you. So those are really uh, important in building that mindset that's non-judgmental, that's um, uplifting and affirming for you. And then the third one is the mind-body connection. And I just tell everyone, our minds and our bodies are intricately connected. And we often, you know, pretend we act as though like particularly, you know, mental health, there's so much stigma around it. We try to separate that from like the rest of our bodies. But what the things that we're stressed about um, in our mind, it often plays out in our bodies. Our bodies are often the first signals that there's something stressful going on for us, even before we are consciously aware sometimes. And so really honoring and paying attention to that mind-body connection is really important. So I encourage people to, you know, make sure you're incorporating movement during the day. Um, it doesn't have to be intense exercise, right? But just movement. How are you connecting back to nature? How are you doing things that bring you joy? And for me, that mind-body connection is that piece. Like all these things connected are connecting to joy. And how do you bring out that joy? Whether it's connecting to hobbies, whether it's creating, um, whether it's experiencing other art forms, right? I think that you know, when you see something that you love, you smile, and that just translates and permeates through the rest of your body. So those are my three M's for mental wellness, mindfulness, mindset, and the mind-body connection. And I think those are really great ways to develop and build a practice that helps support your emotional and mental well-being. Wow. <laughs> that was amazing um, <laughs> on many levels. One, just the fact that the idea of actually coming up with a relaxation process mm. is yeah. brilliant because I don't think, I don't think I have such a thing in my life currently. I don't think having a glass of wine is it, <laughs> but I, I, don't, I think that maybe I stretch throughout the day, but I don't think I currently do this. And so I'm so pleased that we're having this discussion so that I can focus on that piece 
of my day and what I need to set me up for creating. Um, mm. And the other thing that you mentioned was um, journaling. I think I did an episode on how to journal and how to get your thoughts out. And I'll put the links in the show notes about that. But you're right. There's so much that comes out when you journal, when you just talk to yourself. I remember hearing that Beyonce does these video journals. <laughs> and get um which interview that she mm. did but she basically oh, cool. was talking I didn't know about that. <laughs> that she makes her music videos and all came from her own journals she needed to work through some of her own things before she shares that and we take mm -hmm. so much in through our world through advertising through what other people say that I think that journaling is one of the last places where we can actually reflect and let our mind, our, our self-conscious, every, everyone, all of those um, aspects of ourselves meet and they come on the page or they come through. If, if, you know, there are folks who decide to do videos and just talk to themselves, I think it's just underrated. <laughs> Yeah, I agree. Yeah. And that's why I tell people it doesn't have to be writing in a book, right? So I think people like, oh, journaling, they immediately go to writing. And I definitely, you know, definitely think that's important. But there are other ways. And I love, I mean, I, again, I didn't know about Beyonce's video journals, but I'm going to use that. So <laughs> thank you for sharing that piece. Because I talk about you can do audio. So yeah, I love that she's shared that piece. I have to look, look that up. But yeah, I think that's so important to create a practice around that i'd love to talk about finding your sweet spot and the deck that you created through InnoPsych because i feel like that fits so well through talking about mindfulness mindset and the mind body connection i was just flipping through the the deck why don't we start by talking about wh why you came up with it and then we could i have the deck in front of me so i'd love to pull some few some of them out yeah, thank you for bringing that up because as I was sharing the the um, the three M's for mental wellness, that is the foundation for the Finding My Sweet Spot card deck. We're actually in the process of rebranding, so we're actually going to call them My Time to Thrive. But they are essentially based on mindfulness practices, the mindset and the mind-body connection. In 2009, December 2019, I did this. Um, round women's round table at this really big national women's conference and I wanted to create these cards that I could have people engage in conversation so I actually have my original deck they're, they're very different from what you have in your hand but that was the impetus it was like oh let me think about how I could engage people around emotional wellness right I wanted to go in and be able to talk about mental health and give people strategies but I also know like people often there's this barrier this block about talking about their own emotional wellness and so I wanted to make it really easy for folks so that was the impetus for for creating the cards you know it's really evolved over time and we actually finished them I actually finished them in June 2020 I think after COVID hit that was also another impetus that really helped me like really lit the fire for me it's like okay these people are going to actually be want to use these and these could be helpful for people going through really challenging times but the focus there are 10 strategies they're based on you know strategies that work so there's about there's 10 categories i'll start with s um so there is song there's spirituality there's solidarity there's our self-talk and sharing our story so they all connect to practices that help people build an emotionally healthy self and the deck, there are 70 cards, in, uh, seven cards in each of the 10 categories. And there are journal prompts, there are activities that you can do. And then there are also quotes, because I love quotes. <laughs> and so, yeah, they've been really, really helpful and people really enjoy them. So we're excited that people are finding them useful. And we're actually in the process of launching a journal that will go along with the the deck the card deck too so i'm really excited about that part as well so i love the quote by taraji p henson when she says so many people are ashamed of their flaws i am not all of that made me 
who I am today. Yes, yes. Um, she is amazing. And I, yeah, I wanted to pull from voices of people who we may not have heard talk about mental health or connect pieces that really, again, it's around mental health, but again, the really focus up is around emotional health. So I love the work that she's doing also with her foundations and promoting and really talking about mental health and, and mental wellness. So she, I definitely wanted to make sure she was featured in the card deck. I wanted to mention how much I love your branding. Um, Thank it's you. It's <laughs> gorgeous. I mean, your branding, your brand colors, it's soothing, the lines, the swirls. Yeah, I have an amazing graphic designer. She is amazing um, and shout out to Denise at Demp Agency I love her yeah she is just great and her artistry um, talking about artists right and creative is really powerful so I was very fortunate to connect with her you know we've been working for probably about two years now but I really trust her work and her craft and you know there's sometimes we, we have good conversations if there's something that's not quite right but I just, she gets, she gets me and what I want to put out there. So I love that. Um, I love the fact that the deck is really a great way to tune back in. And even I, I'm thinking that since I'm now going to have a relaxation process, that I'm going to incorporate them in that process. There's this quote that, another quote that I love from Barack Obama. He says, change will not come if we wait mm -hmm. for some other person or some other time we are the change that we seek. Mm -hmm. And I feel like this is all that you're, you're saying is such a great way to remind us that we can be the change. Um, and in particular for me, for years now, I was thinking that I, I should go to therapy, I should go to therapy. And this is the year that I decided to just do it. I used InnoPsych to look for a therapist of color. Maybe one of the reasons why I didn't do it prior was because it was really difficult to find a therapist of color. And I specifically wanted someone who identified as black. Um, so uh, thank you. Uh, can you tell us like, how did the, <laughs> thank you, I really mean it. How did the idea for InnoSight come about? Well, first, just um, I just always want to just highlight and and just thank you for sharing that and sharing your story. Um, and I I have found that the people being open to therapy is because people are actually sharing their stories and their experience, their positive experiences in therapy. So I just want to thank you for putting that out there because I think it allows people to say, oh. Oh, she's going to see a therapist. Or she's in a therapist. Okay, it may not be that bad, right? Um, but so yeah, InnoPsych started because I, you know, a number of things. Um, part of my work has really been, um, you know, in my bio, you said I love talking about mental health, and I really do. And so I, every opportunity that I get to talk about mental health and mental wellness, I jump on it, and so. Um, I have been doing a lot of speaking engagements over the, you know, the past two, three years, let's say maybe three, four years. And so I would notice whenever I would go up, you know, after the end of my talk, people would come up and want to talk to me and say, oh, you know, I've been looking, it's hard to find, or thank you for sharing that. I, I, you know, I'd like to find a therapist. Can you help me find one? And back then it was like, okay, yeah, sure. I'll, you know, send a few emails to my friends and connect you. Uh, so, but then it came to a point where it was not sustainable. It was like people were using me as a director. I'm like, I am not the yellow pages people. So I'm like, there has to be a different way. And then uh, a couple of years ago, I was going through my own process and looking for a new therapist. And it took me over six months to find a therapist. And I wanted, similar to you, I wanted a black woman who I could connect with, who got my experiences, who walked, my, you know, some of my journey, um, who I didn't have to explain things to. And, you know, it took me over six months um, to find and connect with a therapist, a Black woman. So I was like, whoa, people were really right, right? This, this is not that easy. 
And, you know, I'm a therapist, like this should not take that long. And, you know, the, honestly, the process was also very frustrating because you would call people, they wouldn't get back to you or they were, you know, it was just like a really, really awful process. And, and I was like, you know, people are often calling, looking for therapists when they're in a crisis, right? They're, you know, I, again, we talk about seeing a therapist when there's not a problem, but people don't typically look for therapists when there's not a problem. So just imagine that you're at a difficult time in your life and you have to go through this really arduous process of trying to find a therapist. You can't. And I'm like, so there has to be a better way. And so that was really the, the impetus. I did find a resource. It was a Google Doc. <laughs> There's a Google Doc going around in this area. And I'm like, oh, this is, and it was outdated. I'm like, no, this is like 2018, 2017. We got to do better. So I just took it upon myself. And, you know, there's a philosophy that, you know, I do, you know, for better or worse, you know, if something is, is not working or it's not there, like, you know, I can't complain. Then I got to go create it. I got to make it happen. I realized that I did have one more question for you about any other healing practices or strategies or techniques that you think might be helpful to our population um, and to our listeners. Just particularly in this time, we're in this really challenging pandemic, I don't know, post-pandemic yet, but uh, that it's been really challenging. And one of the things that I allow people and I share with people is that it's really important to tap into and recognize what you're feeling and to give yourself permission to experience those feelings. I think for many of us, we learn like a lot of our feelings are unacceptable or we we can't show them because of who we are, our social identities or how we were raised. But it's so important to just know and name your feelings because I think it really helps foster a healthy emotional development. And the other thing, it's well, I'll I'll do two other things, sorry. Um, The other thing I want to say is that this idea of um, building a support network, right? Sometimes when we talk about like you're hustling or you're on your grind, you know, it can, you can, it can be really, really easy to get tunnel vision and just focus on the work and the grind and forget your support networks. But it's so important to make sure that you're touching base with people, connecting building those human connections is really important. And then the last one is asking for help. I think many of us, you know, because of our perfectionism or our desire to achieve, it's really hard to show vulnerability or to show that we need help or support in some way. Um, But I, I see the people who are successful, they know how to ask for help, they know how to tap into their resources. And they know how to express and, and, and deal with their emotions. So those are three things I'd love to leave you with. I have to say, these are all things that I have a hard time with, <laughs> that I don't do very well, <laughs> to be honest. Um, but I think having mm-hmm. my son has been one way to help me with the first in terms of what are you feeling and what are the names for those feelings and it's because it's so important to help kids understand what they're feeling and help them navigate that and building a support network i realize more than ever how important that is especially during this time that we're still in this pandemic a year later we're still here um and then in terms of asking for help that is not something that i've i do very well but I've started to um, do that more and more. I have a friend who's very good at this. And she always says, Martine, ask for what you want. Ask for what you want. And I think like I've become better, whether it's just a a glass of water. (laughs) Um, And that's easy to do, to ask my (laughs) husband, hey, can you get me a glass of water? Mm -hmm. Or to ask a friend to read over an article that I wrote. So it's, it's, and and I think that, it's important to realize that you could take baby steps until you get you feel like that you you get you get better and better at some of these things. Yep, yeah, yeah, exactly. Baby steps, right? And it's again use the idea of practice. These are you want to start practicing, and when you start practicing, you don't start with the whole thing, right? As an artist, you don't do the whole thing right away necessarily, right? You start small pieces until you get there.
And I think, yeah. too, if we bring it back to artists and we think about the artistic practice, what are you feeling? And if for me, being a commercial photographer, my work is all about feelings. It's all about conveying feelings. And so I have to be able to talk with the talent and to help them emote that feeling and know the tools that I need to have in my arsenal to help them get to the feeling that we want to help the the clients just to execute the client's vision in yeah. terms of the product that they're they're selling and building a support network when you are a creative or even a professional any profession is so important and you know this is where you mix the professional and the personal um, you have to have those two pillars they both have to be very strong in order for you to have a really i don't want to say a fulfilling life but one where you feel supported i suppose and then asking for help if you are an artist you need help in so many different ways <laughs> <laughs> yeah. it's not just the personal yeah. it's it's both it's definitely both and again these are things that you know i've learned along the way and there's you know again i i always tell people i you know and i think the humility is that these are things that i'm still working on right sometimes our the way that we're raised or socialized can make some of these really challenging it's you know again like you said started with baby steps right you're not going to conquer it right away but recognizing that it's okay to ask for help that it's okay to build a network and tap into your network um, and I've been in places where I'm on my on my hustle. I'm like, I don't got time for friends. And then I realize, like, but it's not fulfilling. Then the work, the journey is not fulfilling if I don't tap back into those supports, mm. my support network. That was just a quote right there. I'm saying, <laughs> just saying, <laughs> the journey isn't fulfilling if you don't have a network. Mm. I think I'll have to rewind and go yeah, back and listen yeah. to that. I didn't write it down, so I'm like, ah. <laughs> All right. As we are wrapping up, I'd love to talk, go back to InnoSight. I know that it's such a great resource and I've used it. Talk to us a little bit about how people who are interested in finding a therapist can go about doing so. Yeah, very good. Thank you again for um, this having me on and doing something I love. So yeah, InnoPsych, we are easy to find. Um, so we're um, InnoPsych.com and think of Inno as innovative and psych, uh, the first part of psychology. So InnoPsych and .com. And we have um, the directory you're able to search. The directory you're able to search by six criteria. We wanted to highlight one, your location, your insurance, um, the type of service you're looking for, um, the type, the cultural background of your, the provider you're interested in. So we wanted to be able to give some search filters that you can do. Um, we are national directories, so we have some folks in Chicago. We have wherever you are, we have folks for you. Our, we have an aggressive campaign this year to increase our network to 2021 therapists this year. So I'm really excited by that challenge. Um, because we really want to make sure that when people go to the directory that they can find someone and that that person is taking clients, right? Because that becomes a barrier if you don't have. If you come to the site and you can't find someone, uh, people tend to give up. So we are really appreciating any efforts to help raise our visibility in the community and nationally. So again, thank you so much for this opportunity, Martine. I really appreciate it. Thank you. I think my whole family will thank you better for this <laughs> when I am <laughs> when I am more of myself these days, um, and I'm able to wrestle yeah. with some of the demons that I have, as we all do, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Oh, yeah. So before oh, yeah. we go, I'd love to ask you one question. It's a little fun one that I started asking mm -hmm. this season of the podcast, and essentially. There are some podcasts that, you know, incorporate video, but this one doesn't yet. Everyone's hearing your voice, but I'd love for them to know a little bit more about you. So the question is, mm -hmm. tell us one thing that we wouldn't know about you by just listening to your voice. Um, 
Good question. So I'll give you two things because <laughs> never easy. So one thing you can't see is my smile. I love to smile and I'm always beaming about something and I have a very distinct laugh. People would always be able to say, oh, I heard your laugh <laughs> from somewhere else. So I, uh, I love that. Uh, I love that I can bring joy to places that I'm at. And the other thing I would say is just a part to share a little bit about me and who, some of my love. So I love water. I love the beach. I love the ocean. But I'm a horrible swimmer. And people are always like, well, you grew up on the islands. Like, yeah, but they need to swim to get around the <laughs> island. So, <laughs> but I love being by the water. And it's so calm and relaxing for me. So, yeah, we island babies, yeah. right? I love being by the water. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm so pleased that we were able to catch up. It's been a long time coming. So thank you so much for coming on. Can you tell me about how we could stay in touch with you and learn more about InnoPsych and about you? Sure. Um, yeah, thank you. This was really, really um, a pleasure and love that I got to talk to you because I always see you, you're this cool fashion photographer. I love your work. It's so beautiful. So I felt very honored to be invited. I was like, ooh, why do you think I'm cool? All right, man. <laughs> so, yeah, definitely um, our uh, website, InnoPsych.com. We're really uh, vibing on Instagram, InnoPsych, and um, Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. You can find me on LinkedIn, Charmaine Jackman, Dr. Charmaine Jackman on LinkedIn. Um, my personal handle is Ask Dr. Charmaine. So if you want to connect with me um, and some of my other work, you can find me there. But yeah, I love look forward to connecting with your audience. And you know, I, as I mentioned, I love supporting artists and love being around art. So thank you for this opportunity. I wanted to mention that InnoSight TV is also awesome. <laughs> Ooh. on youtube i've been watching i was um watching it to prepare for this interview but in general i was just like oh my gosh and it's just amazing to to see your smile so people can go on to see your smile and your <laughs> colorful jewelry that you wear i just wanted to say thank you for coming on and for sharing your warmth with us i can't believe that it's taken so long for us to connect. What's up with that? <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. You. I mean, I think we were just starting to connect. And then uh, that's you moved true. To Chicago. I'm that's like, true. Really? And then last <laughs> year, you were coming to Chicago, and we were in Australia. Oh no, not last year. The year yeah, before. Yeah. But hopefully. That's right. Hopefully that's right. you'll come back. <laughs> Again. Yeah, we have yeah. Kids with similar, similar names, 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 similar ages, same ages. Love. Yeah, That's funny. But thank you so much for yeah. coming on. I love the work that you're doing, and I, I, I think you're really going to change. I, I'm sure you have already changed the lives of so many people of color who haven't felt welcome in the mental health space because of the providers that were available. But now we can shine a light on yeah. some of the great therapists of color who are out there who, who will be able to help more and more folks. And um, I'll just drop one more way to connect because I forgot to mention, um, we have a program called Thrive in Thursdays um, where we bring on mental health professionals and mental health advocates to talk about mental health. And it's really about the mental health professionals just sharing their own journey some of the struggles that they've had and uh, really, you know, again, giving them a platform, making them more visible so you can see like, oh, we're, you know, we are people just like you. So I think it also helps to make therapy more accessible when people can see themselves reflected and hear, like hear us. You get to meet us before we, you know, may, may see us and you're like, oh, that's, that's not so bad. That's another program that we do that really helped to create you know, different dialogue around mental health and emotional wellness. Oh, perfect. Thanks for sharing that. All right. Thank you so much, Dr. Charmaine Jackman. I know you just said Charmaine, but I love using that doctor. Dr. Jackman, <laughs> thank you for coming on. I really appreciate you. Thank you. Have a great day. Thank you. All right. Take Bye. care. Bye-bye.